Hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome to FX Maniac. This is Sayed Mahmoud Amiri again, and welcome to another great tutorial. And I know it's been almost two weeks that I haven't uploaded a tutorial, but as you probably know, I am from Afghanistan. And as you've probably heard in the news, the country has been taken by the Taliban in the last two weeks. Uh, it's been two weeks now. And uh, there's been some chaos and things going on, um, you know, things were a little messy uh, at the beginning days, but now things are seemingly getting well and fine. Uh, but it didn't stop me from uh, even thinking about not making tutorials or, you know, uh, doing my work and what, uh, what I'm passionate about. So, yeah. I just needed some time to sort everything out and I did and here I am uh, making a tutorial and I have plans for plenty more so I'll keep this on going uh, and uh, yeah so in, the, in today's tutorial I'll show you guys how to do some basic destruction using Maya's end cloth system uh, we're not gonna be using any plugins but uh, you know I will introduce you to some of the plugins that you may want to use uh, you know and you can but it's going to be a basic tutorial because a lot of people have requested it so uh, yeah, uh, without wasting any time, let's get started. All right, so here we are in the computer, and uh, um, if you're new to my channel, FX Maniac, and you know if you find it useful, and uh, you know if you find it useful, you are very welcome to subscribe. And also, if you need some great music for your videos, free, no copyright music, uh, high quality ones, you can check out our second channel, Audio Aura. And that's basically it, and also my Instagram page if you wish. So uh, enough talking, let's get into the tutorial. So I'm just going to go into Maya. So I have Maya 2022 right now. And uh, I'm just going to be showing you guys the scene that I just did. So uh, let's open that up. All right, so here we are. Uh, we have this uh, destruction scene uh, in Maya, and I've actually and the reason it's playing so fast is I've actually cached it as an Olympic file, which I'm going to be showing you guys at the end, all right? And as you can see, some pieces are sliding off, and that's because uh, there is no friction there. So we're, we're, I'm going to show you guys how to introduce some friction, but that is basically the effect. And, uh, you know, uh, the result is right here. So here it is, the result, and it's looking pretty cool, I would say, for a, you know, using just the built-in tools of Maya. So I'm just going to go back into Maya and I'm going to be creating a new scene, right? Okay, so first off, if uh, if you really want to do some destruction, uh, destroy an object like really quickly, I would just, uh, you know, do something like I would go to the window, general editor and content browser. I'm just going to be adding like a uh, biped or animals, maybe like a cat or something. And this cat is pretty big, so I'll just uh, scale it down, hit R, scale it down, hit F on it. And it's pretty low poly, right? So I'm just going to go into Mesh, and I'm going to go into Smooth. And uh, yeah, so that's basically it. And then you would go into Mesh and probably triangulate it. And just go ahead, select all the faces, and go into Edit Mesh, uh, Detach and go to the edge and detach all right so this is basically the basic technique that we're using so now if i go ahead and um apply the uh end cloth physics to this so if i go into the modeling effects uh end cloth create end cloth and once the nucleus is created you can just uh, go into the outliner and if it's not there you can just click here or you can go into the windows um, outliner and select the nucleus and turn on use plane all right so now if i play this it's just going to fall down on itself and it's just going to collapse so it's a very basic and simple way to destroy an object and the way you would uh, add some thickness is by just hitting control e and giving it some thickness like 0.1 or something. So now you have all these pieces that are falling down. So you have this cat and it is just collapsing on itself. And now to look at the dynamics uh, that we just mentioned, the uh, uh, friction and all. So you just select your end cloth 
and you go into the end cloth shape and there's the dynamics properties so you have things like stretch resistance and all these things which uh, it doesn't really uh, apply to this uh, because it's not like a cloth it's just like a rigid body simulation but then you have things like you know drag and mass and all sorts of that stuff which is uh, relevant to you know what we're doing and you can you can go into the collisions and you can go ahead and increase the friction so it will basically uh, have more friction and increase the bounce if you want it to be bouncy and you can also go ahead into the nucleus options into the ground plane and increase the plane friction and that will not allow the pieces to just slide off of the plane which is this grid right here so uh, yeah that is basically it and you can also increase or decrease the gravity uh, so there's a lot of settings that I've mentioned in my previous tutorials uh, you know my dynamics uh, my end particles and you know the Thanos destruction tutorial so if you want you can go ahead and check them out uh, but still if you want me to do another tutorial an update um, on these things you can just go ahead and tell me in the comments so this is basically the effect and now we're going to do it the uh, ground destruction way so I'm just going to go ahead and create a new scene here and very quickly I'm just going to be adding a plane and scale it up and the thing I'm I want to do is I want to go into the polyplane and increase it to like what 40 by 40 so the more segments you have the more uh, you know pieces you're gonna have but of course the more time it's gonna take so I'm just gonna move it up a little bit and then I'm just gonna go into the mesh oh, sorry the modeling menu and go to mesh and triangulate and this will not be enough for us to get all these details so smaller and bigger details so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the top view right click and go into the vertex and select the shift right click and select the multi cut and just cut like some lines uh, diagonally so just do it like this way so I'm just going to do it quickly And now we're going to do the opposite way. So we're going to add like this. So the more you do it, the more uh, you know pieces you're going to have. So the more time you put into it, the more uh, high quality and random it's going to look. So it is up to you. So just uh, drag them out. Now we're going to do some horizontal lines. So you can just go ahead and do them, you know, quickly. It depends on you. And now we're going to add uh, some vertical lines as well. So it's just going to cut randomly. And it doesn't matter, just you can go ahead and cut like whichever direction you want. Just to make it random, but I think this will be enough. And for a good measure, you can also go ahead and do one more triangulate to get a lot more of the details in the pieces. All right? So now that we've created this, we're just going to do the same old thing. So just select, right click, select all the faces, go into the mesh, sorry, the edit mesh, detach and select all the edges. Right click, by the way, to go to the edge and select them all and go into edit mesh, uh, detach. And that's basically it. So for now, uh, if I um, turn this into cloth, so hit Alt B to change the viewport of Maya, the viewport background. I'm going to go into the effects menu and go into the end cloth and create end cloth. So now they're just going to be falling down, right? Uh, but uh, as you might have remembered, if I go into the nucleus, select the outliner. And if it's not there, just click here. Select the nucleus, hit Control A and use plane. So now they won't fall down. And the thing is, we have a little bit of a space here, but it is all right. We can just move this down uh, because we moved the plane down initially, but it's fine. So now we're going to just create some colliders to collide with this object. So I'm just going to go from the top view and uh, just go ahead and create one in the middle. You know, the size depends on you and just going to clone it. Hold down shift and drag it here, maybe make it smaller. Hold down shift here 
and the two of them down here. So we want to keyframe them to be uh, at the bottom first and then just burst through the surface and just explode. All right. So you want to go ahead and uh, set key, hit S for all of them. And then you want to go into like the 30 frame mark and move all of them up and hit S again to set another key. So now they're just moving up. So just like that. And uh, make sure when you hit S, it's just going to hit, like it's just going to create keyframes for all the transform parameters, like the translate, rotate, and scale. But if you want to keyframe something specifically, you can just right click and key select it. But in this case, I wanted to do it generally because we're only moving up, right? So now, the only thing remains is that you just select all of these and go into effects and cloth and create a passive collider. And if I play this right now, you will see that they will burst through the surface and it will look pretty cool. Isn't that nice? If I just turn on the wireframe uh, on shaded, you can see that we have a very detailed simulation. And uh, we have some random pieces, some small ones, some bigger ones, and yeah. So now in order to, uh, you know, let's just say that we're okay with this, but maybe we're still not because we have to uh, adjust that friction issue. So select the nucleus, go into the outliner, select the nucleus, hit control A, go into the ground friction and increase it because we don't want the pieces to be sliding just like the other example that I forgot. So now the pieces, when they just you know hit the surface, they won't be sliding off of the surface too much, right? Because we've increased the friction. So now, um, just uh, to give it that sort of you know thick look, all you do is hit Control E for extrude and give it a thickness of 0.1, and that will basically be it. Yeah, so now we have all these crazy pieces, which are looking really nice, really cool. And uh, yeah, we've, we've definitely created some, uh, some different levels of sizes and stuff. So now in order to make this, uh, you know, in order to make it, uh, in order to optimize it and playing back, it should be faster. And you don't have to play it every time for it to cache and stuff. You need to go ahead and cache it out as an Olympic file. So you can go ahead into the modeling, go to cache, Alembic, and I'm just going to go export all to Alembic. And you can just select a place and type a name for it and then export all. So because I've already done it, I'm just going to go ahead and open my scene. So uh, open. So here it is my scene. I've just created a camera there. So just like that and all the pieces. You, you don't have, it doesn't have to be like, uh, all five of them at the same time you can cascade the animation but in this case I've just done it like this way alright and uh, yeah so the next thing I did was I, I obviously have a plane for the ground and uh, if I go into the perspective one here is my camera view so just like that they're just exploding and falling off into the ground and uh, just like that and the other thing I did was I added a, uh, if I go into the outliner, a sky dome, which is, if I delete it, it's basically an Arnold light physical sky. So when you add it, you have it here, but then you want to go hit control A and go into uh, the viewport and the sky radius should be zero because we don't want to see it in the viewport. And now if I go ahead into the Arnold renderer, you can see that it is there and I've just made some adjustments to the uh, the uh, light so if I go into the physical sky I just adjusted the azimuth a little bit and increased the uh, elevation because I want the sun to be up higher in the sky and definitely increased the uh, intensity and that is basically the effect that we did. So uh, yeah, you can go ahead and render this out, render it out as an animation and, you know, post it somewhere. Uh, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. 
And uh, also, uh, I do want to mention that this is a very basic and a very, like, not the professional way to destroy objects, but I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. And if you want to do some, uh, you know, I've already done some tutorials on these, so in 3ds Max, basically. But if you want to do uh, more advanced sort of dynamics and destruction using Maya, here's a very cool tool called uh, Pull Down It from ThinkTick, Think, Thinknetic or something, just like, yeah, Thinknetic. So they have it for 3ds Max and they have it for Maya. So as you can see, some very cool destruction and some tutorials are also there. So you can go ahead and check that one out. And uh, yeah, that is a very advanced tool for creating destruction inside of Maya. But this was like a very simple way. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it because uh, I was getting a lot of requests to do a uh, destruction tutorial in Maya. So I did. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, tell me what you want next in the uh, tutorial series or whatever. Uh, and I will be uh, more than glad to hear from you. So yeah, tell me in the comment section for this tutorial. And if you uh, enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, it would mean a lot to me if you just subscribe. Uh, you know, and uh, keep up with our latest tutorials and our uh, audio oral channel to support us, you know, because our channel is brand new and you can follow me on Instagram. So enough talking and this was the today's tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys learned something from it. Until the next one, enjoy working.